Hello, welcome to this service of morning worship. Good that you could be with me today. I can't believe it's October, can you? And the weather has definitely turned as quite a chill in the air as I record this two or three days before you'll be viewing it. But even so, God is still worthy of our worship and so that's what we'll do together today. The Lord be with you and also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We've already had a taster of our hymn in our introduction today, and it's a wonderful hymn. Be Thou My Vision. So we come to that time when we confess to Almighty God the things we've had, we've done or said or thought and we really wish we hadn't. God so loved the world that he gave his only son Jesus Christ to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. And we say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed. 
through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. And so may Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Collect for today. Lord of creation, whose glory is around and within us, open our eyes to your wonders, that we may serve you with reverence and know your peace at our lives' end, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so for our readings. Our first reading today is from the second letter to Timothy, Paul's second letter to Timothy, chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day, recalling your tears, I long to see you, that so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure lives in you. For this reason I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands, for God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed, then, of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Saviour, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. To light through the gospel. For this gospel I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher, and for this reason I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard until that day what I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me, in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. Our second reading today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, starting at the fifth verse. The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. The Lord replied, If you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave who has just come in from ploughing or tending sheep in the field, Come here at once, and take your place at the table. Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink, later you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves, we have done only what we ought to have done. So may I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now I know it's early, and I'm almost too frightened to say it, but I've started thinking about my Christmas shopping. A huge part of our family tradition, and I guess maybe yours as well, is the giving of presents. And I just love to give a gift and watch the reaction of the recipient. It warms my heart. But faith is God's, God's gift to us. 
Now, a reading we haven't had this morning is from Paul's letter, perhaps, to the Ephesians. And in chapter 2, it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of work, so that no one may boast. Faith is therefore God's gift, God's present to us, regardless of what we've done or who we are. And Jesus says that faith is the most powerful tool of all. He says that even if we have the tiniest, tiniest bit of faith, then we can uproot plants just by commanding them. The similar passage in Matthew more famously says that if we have faith as small as a mustard seed, we can move mountains. Faith is trust in God, not trust in fate or destiny or luck. How many times do we say something like, oh, if you're lucky, there's no such thing as luck. Faith is trusting God for our well-being. By his grace, he does what is right for us. Faith is trusting that God will do what is best for us. Faith is belief in God. It is the knowledge that God is our creator and that Jesus is our saviour for eternity. Faith is not an insurance policy. And, oh, OK, I'll go to church just in case there's an everlasting life or heaven type thing. Faith is believing that God is greater than we can possibly imagine and his work continues on the earth today. Faith is sure hope in God. It is knowing that there is life after death for us. It is knowing that God views our life from before we were born and views our life for eternity. Faith is putting aside our reliance on everything or anyone else apart from God. It is not worrying about what will happen tomorrow. It is basking in God's love today. Faith is knowledge in the power of God, the knowledge that God can do anything he fancies. We try to rationalise God, try to understand him, but very often we do this through our own eyes. But how can we fully understand God, God who created us? It's not the other way around. All round, it's a pretty good gift, is faith. It's the gift of taking worrying away. It's the gift of not having to make huge decisions or take the world on our shoulders. It's the gift of surety, of complete knowledge of the unknown, the unknown unknowns. And faith is God-given and therefore has properties which we can't understand, hence moving a mulberry tree into the ocean with just a command or similarly moving a mountain. It's often said that we only use 10% of our brains, whatever that means. But I think we probably only use 10% of our faith. But faith is also incalculable. You either have faith in God as creator and Jesus as redeemer and saviour, or you don't. You don't get a sliding scale of faith. You either believe or you don't. So when the apostles asked Jesus to increase their faith, he was rather incredulous about their understanding and indeed the degree of faith they already had, because faith may be a gift given by God the Father. But gifts have to be received in order for them to be appreciated. God is giving us the gift of faith, but it is useless unless we take it. And if we receive this gift half-heartedly, then we haven't received it at all. If we receive it like we receive an insurance policy, well, just in case, or I'll, I'll go along with it because it's what I've always done. If we receive it without thought or without God-given creativity, then we haven't received faith at all. But if we receive it like a child receives a gift, eagerly, without knowing the full extent of what's to come, with surprise that someone could lavish so much love on us and receive faith with joy and without question, then we will have faith. In order for us to receive this gift, we have to let go of our reliance on other things. For children receiving presents, for that moment when it is presented and when the paper is ripped open to reveal the prize, they are completely focused on the moment. 
there is nothing other than the gift, nothing more important than the gift at that moment in their lives. It's a moment of awe and excitement. Faith is best, best accepted in such a way, best accepted when our reliance on other things is reconsidered and pruned. At this point in the Gospel narrative, the apostles had listened, but hadn't accepted that gift of faith. And once we have it, what then? When we have faith, truly have faith, we can't, however hard we try, keep it to ourselves. And we find that we work endlessly, like a slave, to spread the news of the kingdom of God through our words and our actions. The second part of our gospel reading is about labouring as a slave, but that's for another day. But as we go on our journey with God, we find that our faith becomes less about us. These apostles thought their faith was just about them. It becomes less about us and more about others and our God. In the second letter to Timothy, Paul describes how he works endlessly for the kingdom of God. Indeed, suffering for the kingdom of God. He says this is through grace. And remember, grace is when God gives us the things we don't deserve. Even though we are sinners, through his grace, God gives us the gift of faith. Accept it. Take great joy in that gift. Nurture it and use it. Have belief that God hears our prayers and answers them. Have faith to know that even if he doesn't give us what we want, that only he has the bigger picture. Put your trust and belief at his feet for the whole of your life. Put your faith in God. Amen. And so let us affirm together our common faith in Jesus Christ. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took human nature, died for us and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known to the world? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And so now, let us pray. And so we pray. We're going to pray with some general thoughts and then a bit of space for our own prayers as we lift them to God and ask for his help. And so we pray for the world. We pray for the nations of the world, the leaders of those nations, and our own leaders. And we pray for the pandemic, and for everyone affected by it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our communities, all the communities we belong to, the, the country, our county, our village. And we pray for the people and the organisations and the relationships. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for the church. We thank God for his son, Jesus Christ. And we ask for God's help in spreading 
the word in spreading the gospel of love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for all those who we know, friends, family, who are in need of God's special help at this time, for healing, for peace, for just knowing that they're not alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And let's say together the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, establish, strengthen and settle you in the faith and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. And whatever it is you do today, go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. I hope you have a blessed day, and I pray that you will stay well and those you love as well. See you soon. God bless. Bye.